Hello, amazing people. Thank you for tuning in this week to The Ryan Files. This episode is one that I wanted to do from the very beginning, friends. If you know me, you know how much I love Indiana Jones, Ark of the Covenant lore, ancient artifacts, ancient history, biblical archaeology. Today's guest has and is living a life that I am intrigued by, folks. And as we dive in, not only will Dr. Jim Rankin tell us about where the Ark of the Covenant has been in the past, but where it is today and what its next journey will be, perhaps in the very near future. Buckle up, my friends, because what we are about to discuss is awesome. Are you not curious? curious? Who is this man? Who is this, man? this enigma? Yes, a man of many talents, but he is a glitch in the system. He spends his nights scouring texts for traces of lost knowledge. knowledge. We dare not stand by and turn a blind eye to this man speaking on a public forum. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ryan Files. I've been talking about this for a number of months now, but we're finally going to get him on the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jim Rankin. How you doing? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. Oh, thank you, man. I'll tell you, I love your background. Uh, you, you look like you're uh, in the middle of some adventure right now. <laughs> well, it's kind of my own created adventure in a way, but uh, it just reminds me of the areas we work in so uh, yeah that's cool and you uh you're out of florida yes all right, all right. we're in uh, uh, just, just between tampa and orlando area right now okay what's the weather like there right now it's a little warm around the 80 degree mark we're we're doing good though i got you well the reason why we have you on today jim is because you are the author uh international uh um best-selling author dr jim rankin expedition Ark of the Covenant, and then the subtext down below, which is really paramount uh, to this whole story, is the young Messiah's meeting at the throne. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt that everybody who listens to this podcast knows how much of a Indiana Jones uh, enthusiast I am. Um, here you are living the actual life. I told stories in the past about how when I was a kid, uh, I literally have a scar on my back to this day from a whip I got because I wanted to be Indiana Jones, and I'm surprised that I haven't I didn't break my neck trying to swing from a tree. But um, you're actually living this life. Uh, I'll tell you what, better than me talking. Why don't you just get into uh, how this all started? Because it's an incredible story, and I think it's one that the world needs to know. So take it away. It is. It it really is an incredible story, and and quite honestly, and I don't get into this end of the book, but we initially were a part of all of this to disprove all of it. Uh, we, it, it all started, uh, of course, uh, as you know, I was pastoring a church in Ohio and uh, um, one day we decided to go on a family vacation to uh, the Smoky Mountain area. We ended up in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Um, in a nutshell, I woke up at one o'clock in the morning with a dream. Um, of the Ark of the Covenant. That was the only thing in the dream. My wife uh, kind of smacked me and she said, lay back down, we're on vacation, let's go back to sleep. And, and uh, thus, we, I laid back down, we got up, went to Dollywood Amusement Park, um, got finished up there early, it was warm, It was everybody was getting cranky and uh, we decided to uh, just leave the park and we went to uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And in Pigeon Forge, there was a well-known artist and he was at his shop painting. And I uh, walked in and was talking to him. He was in there painting a, a landscape of the mountains. And a woman taps me on the shoulder. She says, I have what you came in here for. And I, I just thought it was a sales line. So I followed her to the back of the gallery. And there was a huge painting of Jesus's face in the background. The Lion of Judah sprawled out. And the centerpiece was the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. And I, I just kind of shook it off. I said, I'm not interested. I ran out, told my wife, get in the car. We got to leave. 
And uh, we got in the car and drove back to Gatlinburg up into the Craftsman area. And it was the day before our anniversary. It was about 13 years ago. And uh, we went to this conglomerate of these little shops in the mountains area where the craftspeople were. And uh, Sherry went into a purse shop. I went into a jewelry shop to get her something for her anniversary. And the lady said to me, she said, uh, she goes, sir, I have what you came in here for. And uh, I said, I came in here for something for my wife. And uh, she goes, no. And she dangled a necklace out of her hand. And she goes, you came in here for this. And I said, well, what is it? She goes, in the book of Numbers, chapter 10, God called to Moses to make two, two trumpets out of hammered silver. And I finished it, and I said to call the people to the tabernacle because God just descended upon the Ark of the Covenant on his throne. And she goes, yes. And I said, well, I'm not interested in that. She goes, I didn't ask you if you were interested. And she walks over, she puts it around my neck, said, God bless you, have a wonderful time in the Smoky Mountains, and walked away. Um, needless to say, I went next door, told Sherry to get back in the car, and we, we took off. We left. And uh, so we got back to Ohio, and and we were, uh, our church wanted to go down to the Creation Museum uh, down in northern Kentucky, and uh, we made a trek down into that area, uh, went to the Creation Museum. We're on our way back, and someone said, you're into this archaeological stuff of the Bible. Um, why don't we do a study on the true sites? So. I started searching out true things. I'm not big on television documentaries because I found a lot of them not to be completely true, especially ones dealing with Ethiopia, which I didn't know Ethiopia had anything to do with anything at the time. And um, so we ended up, uh, I called the Discovery Channel because there was one program that everything matched. The guy from the from the documentary answers the phone of all things oh, wow. and he says he says i'm on my way to make another filming um i'll send you a copy of the dvd uh god bless you that was it got my address it was done three months later we were getting ready to do uh i was getting ready to do a message on the ark of the covenant and the guy calls back and he says i think you're supposed to be on the expedition with me on the trail of the ark of the covenant which had nothing to do with what we discussed three months earlier right I actually collapsed uh, during the expedition and made my first discovery right exactly where I collapsed. And I actually thought I was having a heart attack. And that's the basis behind how all of this took place, which led us on a, no, Jim, you're not going to disprove this. I'm going to show you some things that are going to change your life. That's interesting uh, because I've, I've looked into a lot of this stuff myself, just, um, kind of a casual researcher of everything. Um, I really enjoy um, biblical archaeology. I enjoy megalithic ruins, um, a lot of different things. So obviously I've kind of dabbled a little bit into this and I was familiar with the stories of Ethiopia, but not to the extent that uh, you, you took it to. It's funny though, the Ark of the Covenant comes up in modern pop culture Um, just like you said on a number of television shows and and whatnot Um, I know right now on the curse of Oak Island they are very convinced that the Ark of the Covenant is somewhere down in the money pit Uh, you obviously have a lot of stories um, and examples of how uh, the Knights Templar went to the tabernacle and dug for it and found it and you know during the Crusades and scurried it out somewhere to Scotland or uh, you know to the Vikings or whatever um, there's just so much interesting uh, lore so to speak and but it is interesting um, the Ethiopia account uh, even on you know programs like ancient aliens uh, they talked about the, um, uh, the, the, the the place in uh, Ethiopia that um, houses it allegedly and um, it seems like that might have been uh, kind of the direction that you were going that you were taken um so your first trip you, know, you make this trip this guy out of nowhere which is crazy uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna start answering every phone call that comes in case anybody wants to ask me to go on a trip like that um just out of the blue says hey i think you need to be on this trip which is awesome and what's even more incredible um is how your wife was involved and she was totally on board this is something that just uh to, to come that quickly and for you to say yes is a big deal and not everyone has that chip no and, and I, I you know I had been I mean between the age of six and 12 uh, when we first moved from Florida to Ohio I had dug up an entire Indian village on my own 
Mm -hmm. and it still sits there today. I mean, no one has been there to really look at it since. Um, so I always had that thrill of investigating and, and uh, research, but nothing like what had happened here because um, when we went on the expedition, we, we started at the place where you just mentioned in Ethiopia where they claimed to house the Ark of the Covenant. We went in, we got access to the treasury. Now they literally guard that building. It's a fenced area and they guard that area with armed guards. And then there's a guy inside called the guardian who never leaves that. Um, and whenever there's a documentary about the Ark of the Covenant in Ethiopia, they, the Ethiopians, if you go over, you slip them a few dollars, they're gonna give the same story, which everybody has. And that's the uh, son of Queen of Sheba and Solomon Menelik came and visited his father. He stole the Ark of the Covenant, took it back to his mother in Ethiopia, and that's they've had it ever since. That does not match the Bible or any archaeological accounts at all. Right. But yet we're sold on that because that's what all of the documentaries have said. Right. Uh, with that said, when we got access to go into the treasury, which is an old military bunker, we went in there and that was three days before I made the discovery uh, of, of the Ark footholds itself. But I literally was standing there in sweat in this old musty room and fell into a, a, a shelf covered in solid gold diamond encrusted crowns of the kings. Wow. I hit the shelf, spun around, fell to my knees. I mean, I literally was numb and I was face to face with two ancient hammered silver five and a half foot long trumpets. Hmm. By that time, the guard was on me, one of the armed guards, the curator, my guide, everybody was with me. And um, they told me that those are the two trumpets from Numbers chapter 10, that the woman who gave me the necklace a year earlier, which I had on that day, had told me about. And that's they were incredible. standing right there in front of me. And that's the, that's, that's the story that everyone gets about Menelik with the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. The story that we give and share is archaeologically sound, scripturally sound, and then the follow-up to it speaks to itself. Absolutely. Now, these trumpets, were you able to touch them? Were you able to hold them or anything? Uh, I have, yes. That's incredible. Um, we, we've helped them in that place now. Um, right, right. It's not dusty and musty like it used to be, and we're trying to help them protect everything. Okay, great. And a great opportunity to help and clean up and touch. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, interesting. Um, I mean, if these are the actual trumpets in the Old Testament, that's incredible, like uh, tangible, you know, bringing the Bible to life, so to speak. Um, that has got to be an incredible feeling, and especially understanding what the trumpets meant what they were used for yeah and and it's funny because num with that said in numbers chapter 10 um these two trumpets are hammered ancient silver it's a different type of silver with 12 bands of the 12 tribes of israel around them right and it, it's absolutely amazing so if those exist and uh, are around today kind of makes you think that maybe uh they have a use yet to come they said on that day, they said, these were the trumpets that King David blew, and they are the trumpets that we will blow again when we return the throne to Jerusalem, hmm. which is the top part of the Ark of the Covenant. Right, right. Okay, so this is already a wild adventure. You're at the place where, uh, you know, allegedly it, the, the Ark of the Covenant resides, um, guarded by the Guardian and some soldiers. I do think it's interesting. Back in 2021, uh, they had some, uh, I guess, Ethiopian army soldiers or whatnot tried to come in. Uh, 750 people, I think, allegedly were uh, killed that day. Um, do you know uh, anything about that? Has there been other attempts? I, I would imagine if something that valuable is there, someone's going to try to get it by right or wrong reasons. Well, from my understanding, and from what I have seen, there is an underground system of tunnels. Mm -hmm. um, there has also been Mussolini came and he tried to take that. Mm. Uh, so that underground system of tunnels, you know, is where it's claimed that it went into. It wouldn't surprise me if it's still there now or on the move somewhere else because they, 
they have been known to have moved it in different times to different locations, okay. uh, depending on what the threat was. Well, yeah, and you get down there and those tunnels are extensive uh, all throughout uh, Egypt and um, all throughout the Holy Land. I mean, there's there's tunnels and caves and stuff everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and, and they, with the opportunity that they have, it's dry desert area. It's just like something out of the Middle East. Um, so they're able to do, and they've been working on these things for centuries. All right. It's not like it's an overnight, you know, threat to them. All right. All right. So um, a few days later, um, you're taking in more of uh, Ethiopia, and uh, you you come to a town called uh, what is it? Bel the Delhar. What is it? Bahadar. Bahadar. Yeah. There you go. And um, take a little boat ride and. Uh, come to a certain island. Uh, tell us all about that. Well, it's a massive lake. It's 100 miles north to south, 68 miles east to west, Lake Tana, um, considered to be the holy the holy lake. A um, lot of little islands all over the place. Each one has its own little monastery. But one island's considered the holy of, of the holy, and it's Tana Kirkos Island. And that particular island was claimed to have had the Ark of the Covenant there. You have to have permission to even land on it you then climb a 68 foot tall cliff at the time to get up there uh, if you were given permission. So we were given permission. Uh, we got to the top, the women have to stay there. They're not allowed to go any farther. Uh, we continued on through the jungle. Now, like I said, 68 foot way up and um, we were walking through the jungle. I thought I was having a heart attack. My, my chest was pounding like I was just, it was, it was painful and uh, I was, had another gentleman with me, uh, uh, a retired engineer who was walking with me, and he was holding my arm. And uh, we came to a rock archway uh, next to an ancient treasury, uh, which they're housing a tremendous amount of artifacts in that treasury. But at the archway, I started to step through it, and they grabbed me and ripped me back through it and said, you must remove your shoes because you are about ready to walk on holy ground. Mm. So I'm like, I was kind of disillusioned at the time. and and. Um, kicked off my shoes and um, my friend was helping me walk because uh, I was just kind of wobbly and we came to a stone platform that was covered in grass and, and leaves and dirt and, and they were claiming that they said here's where the Ark of the Covenant sat right here over here is where uh, one of the pole holes for the Holy of Holies another pole hole was up, up, up behind him two of them had broken off during an earthquake and they had found those and brought those, cut them off and brought them back up. Um, but as I was standing there listening to him, I was just, all of a sudden, I couldn't, I, I couldn't understand anything that was happening. I grabbed my chest, rocked back, and just flattened right on the platform of where they claimed the ark was. Uh, they pulled me up to my knees, and I just started ripping the grass off, and it came up in, in huge chunks because it was on rock and uh, started throwing it and they're screaming at the top of their lungs they were they were thinking i was defiling the platform of the throne which they had been guarding for centuries and um lo and behold when i cleared it off and cleared off the dirt and the leaves and and everything there were seven engravings on the platform and it's it's a it's a you know flat platform seven engravings and the seven engravings were what they call footholds to hold something into place Right. And there were three and three and one in the center. And with that said, they just happened to measure the exact dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant of the Bible, exactly where they claimed it was, but had 17, 1,700 years, have never cleaned it to check it. Wow. They literally fell to their knees. And today I have unlimited access to that, to that mm -hmm. area because of that discovery. As a matter of oh. fact, the man who guards that island today, um, he says, I was a young boy, makes me feel a little old, but he says, I was a young boy when you were here and made that discovery. And now he's the one that caretakes for it. Wow. And he's like the new Abba, I guess? Well, yeah, kind of for that island, yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, that's interesting, man. Like, and what was really cool too is, you know, we're talking about it and I, I think that you know, just a, a real cursory thought would be like, okay, the Ark of the Covenant has four feet, probably in the four corners, but you're seeing seven. 
I'm a woodworker, I build stuff. And uh, if you ask any of my friends, I probably build it a little bit too heavy, a little bit too strong. And when you're talking about something like that, that heavy that's covered in gold and uh, has stone tablets inside of it, you're probably gonna wanna have some supports in the, in the middle. And um, that totally makes sense. Well, our, our thought of the Ark of the Covenant, most of our thoughts come from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Sure. Uh, without a doubt. So the way they explained the Ark, of course, was made of acacia wood covered in gold. The top was solid gold, which is the throne, the mercy seat. And of course, like you said, the stone tablets inside. And gold is soft, so mm -hmm. it would have had a tendency to bend. So you had three supports on each side and one right in the center. Yeah. It absolutely... A 1700 year old uh, or 1700 years since they had seen it um, right on the platform where they claimed it measuring the dimensions of the ark it, it's undeniable what we found yeah and um, of course that's an incredible that you know just through this weird almost mistake um, and almost passing out and falling down and um, but you know, you discovered it and, uh, that's, that's gotta be kind of a great feeling to me. Uh, and I, I tell people, I go back all the time, right? I remeasure it every time like, thinking it's going to change, but it's to me, it was, people have asked me, why do you think you were the one? And I, I said, you know, I, I believe there were a lot of other people who had the opportunity, but didn't take it. They were too involved in other things, I think. Um, but God literally, I believe, flattened me on my face on that platform. And just almost unconsciously, I started ripping the grass up unbeknownst of their screaming until I was told about that by the, all the other men that were surrounding me at the time. Right. So it, it's been surreal, but it also was the beginning of the leading to a lot of other things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Ark of the Covenant is on this island, uh, Tana Kirkos. Um, how did it get there? I mean, we obviously uh, talk about Menelik and all that not being true. We know that it was in uh, King Solomon's temple. Um, we know that at some point it wasn't. Um, so it shows up. It, there's got to be a journey. Well, there is, and, and that that was the journey for us after after all of this. We, we had actually found out the last mention of the Ark of the Covenant itself in a physical sense was during Second Chronicles 35 in the Bible, where Josiah, the king of Israel, cries out to the Levites who are marching in front of the Egyptian army and into a battle up to the, see the Babylonians. Um, he cries out, tells them, don't let it be a burden upon your shoulders. Of course, they carried it on their shoulders. He says, come back and serve your people, Israel. Bring the ark back, is what he's saying. Um, they didn't heed to that. They kept on going. But the Pharaoh comes marching right behind him, uh, the Pharaoh Nico, and they he confronts the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh really has no business with him. But the Pharaoh sends messengers in with him and says, don't meddle with me, Josiah. I'm getting my commands from God. God is the one guiding me. And it's done in a sense of it's presented as Yahweh in, in the biblical text, which means the only way that could happen is if the Levitical high priest was getting those orders from God upon the throne. Right. Knowing so that, he said, we followed the trail back, said, okay, wait a minute. Um, it's Here's the Egyptian connection, which Indiana Jones talks about that, but just the wrong location. Uh, mm -hmm in an island called uh, Elephantine Island in Ashwan, Egypt, in the far south of Egypt, uh, an island right in the middle of the Nile River, there was a temple that was destroyed in 410 BC, um, and the entire village around it on the island was a Hebrew village. Hmm. And they know that for a fact. Uh, matter of fact, you walk in it today, you literally crush Hebrew pottery all over the place. Yeah. Um, the temple measures the dimensions of Solomon's temple, there's a Holy of Holies, the dimensions of Solomon's Holy of Holies, and they found documents, papyrus, in, this, in the uh, perfectly preserved sand um, from the time period that share that the Pharaoh had ordered the destruction of the temple, 
and the tribes of Dan and Benjamin came from the source of the Nile River, which we know today to be Ethiopia. 82% of all the water comes out of, the, out of that uh, lake. So they took them to the source of the Nile River. Thus, there it is moving down the, or back actually upriver because mm-hmm. the Nile River flows northward. So upriver and it's going back to the source and it ends up on Tanakirkos Island. And then in 314 AD is when King Azana, the last Ethiopian Christian king, came to the island, took the Ark of the Covenant to where they claim it is today. Right. That's the that's the biblical pathway. Okay. Okay. It is kind of amazing. I don't know that um I was aware that there was ever any Egyptian pharaoh uh who served Yahweh. Well, there actually is. There yeah. are two of them. Egypt's notorious for saying we don't have anything of the Bible here. Right. But, uh, I can take you to Luxor uh Karnak Temple in Luxor. And Luxor has Shishak uh, which is the one that um, Indiana Jones talks about, the Pharaoh. And there's a wall there talking about his conquest of Israel. Right. And, uh, so there's many things in Israel that take you back to the biblical times, or excuse me, of uh, Egypt itself. Yeah. And this is just one of many of them. Right. Well, speaking of Egypt, um, you know, we, we're going to change gears, but I feel like we're kind of um, two different stories that will end up colliding. We know of Egypt in the Bible because uh, Mary and Joseph uh, escaped. Um, you know, Jesus was born and they found out about it. Hey, he's the king of the Jews and uh, a new king is born with, from the wise men. And of course, the decree went out, kill every children, uh, all the children two years and younger. Uh, angel came down to Joseph in a dream, uh, take Mary and the young boy and, and leave and escape to Egypt. Egypt um, and then you know we, we hear about this in the Bible we then hear years later at the age of 12 he's in the temple uh, teaching and learning and whatnot with you know scholars and whatnot something had to happen though between the time that they left and the time that they obviously returned um, and we know that Egypt was a part of it uh, why don't you pick up the story from there well and the one thing that you have to remember is if anything would have happened egypt would have recorded it because if you know anything about egypt you see their temples there's writings of everything they kept record of everything but you also have you kind of have a double thing here you had two of the um apostles who also worked in that part of the country as well you had mark who his entire life was in Alexandria, Egypt, practically after he left Israel um, and he was killed there. He actually had a seminary type school teaching the Bible or about the the Old Testament and about Jesus. Um, Then you had Matthew who was in Ethiopia and was murdered there. So you had these two men also telling the story. And what we know is after the Egyptian record of the story and the Egyptian Empire fell, the Muslims and then later the Coptics, uh, the Coptic Christian Church that came out of the desert during the time of Roman ruler Diocletian, um, they took those records and hid them for the most part. And we have real good access to those today. We know what happened, where they went, and it wasn't just a journey to Egypt. Egypt was the beginning of it. They actually ended up in Ethiopia, which is would have been south of Egypt at that time. Of course, today you have Sudan, which used to be Ethiopia, um, or Abyssinia, as they call it. But uh, that that was the area, and that's where Jesus actually ended up going to. We, we've taken him all the way down the Nile River, right into the source of the Nile in Ethiopia. To the island. To the island of Tanakirkos. Right. The Bible references that he went to his father, and the only place he could have went to his father is in front of the throne because it's the only place God ever returned after he walked with Adam on this earth. So the, 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 there is a platform there. There is a, a book that is 1,900-year-old book in the treasury there, on, uh, hand-drawn on papyrus and animal hides. Um, it's just incredible 
the history that lays it out, and one who would not be working with the other, they match perfectly together. Right. Jesus came there, was given the grace, wisdom, and knowledge that uh, Isaiah chapter 7 speaks that he will get, and Luke 2.40 says he got, and then after a 10-year period, he shows up at 12 years of age with all of this knowledge and wisdom. Yep. His family went to find him in the temple. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. You know, I'm sure that you've thought about this. I'm sure everybody has probably at some time or another thought, well, okay, Jesus is born a man. Um, man, I don't know about you, but whenever I was younger, I was just a crazy, you know, and, uh, uh, but he, you know, he didn't sin. Um, it makes sense that maybe at a very young age, he had a uh, pretty uh, awesome schooling in, yeah. You know, and this would be the perfect example of what that is. I mean, I guess you said uh, in the bi- three three months and ten days. Three it months and ten days, he stayed on that island. Three, three months and ten days, days just getting. No one was allowed near where he was at with on with the the Ark of the Covenant. Um, and and he, after it was over, said and done, they went back to the mainland and began the journey back straight up the Nile River, uh, back into Egypt, and pretty much the same path going back up into. Uh, into Israel itself. It's incredible. So this uh, search for the Ark of the Covenant turned into something far more substantial. It, it, it ended up to be a whole lot more than we had planned. Yeah. And it's it's gone so far beyond that now that um, it's it's almost unbelievable what all has been hidden out there. And, and you know, people ask me all the time, Do you really believe it? Yes, I lived this. I had to live it. And in the process, I seen writings and and documents and pottery shards with writings on it of things that the world has not known, but are ancient pieces from the time period. Right. It's kind of interesting how much history has been lost or hidden. Um, And I know uh, just an example, the text, that you were talking about the 1900 year old text uh, written by John, correct? That's it was actually penned by Pecurus, right? John's penman, right? But, uh, John was the one who relayed it to him. Yep, and uh, there was two copies of it. One was in the library at Alexandria, which of course burned. Wonder what all could have been in that library? Oh, I. I Right now, there are over 417 manuscripts hidden in that in that one treasury on that island, wow. including ancient manuscripts that only fragments have been seen in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So it's just phenomenal what's still hidden away out there in caves and locations that we don't even know. Right. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of adventures left to uh, uh, go on. Yeah. Awesome, man. I just am curious, like, why this is something I think the world needs to know. And obviously you wrote an amazing book about it. I love this book. And part of the reason why I enjoyed this so much was because it reads, it reads almost like a journal. Um, it tells a story just through the experience in a, you know, a timeline fashion. I know uh, I was in Peru last year checking out all the megalithic ruins and whatnot and um kept a journal and um as i go back and read it sometimes and it has the same feel uh i feel like you know i'm right there with you you know as you're getting you know you're on the boat three hour boat ride and you're taking down some notes and it's very interesting from that standpoint to read i really enjoy that um but man i tell you what i'm just I'm, I'm blown away by it. Well, it, it, it's one of those things from the book standpoint is really the real life. Um, I believe I'm, if I'm going to share, I want to share with what truly happened and then take it beyond with what really did happen right. a long time before. And so a lot of people have told me it's just like we're right there with you. And that was the intention of it. I want you to be there with me. Right. I want you to feel what I felt through that whole process yeah well it definitely translates very well and you feel like you were on that trip i mean and it caused me to do some more research you know i I wanted to pull up maps and see where all this stuff is and you know measure distances and i i really just uh 
I would recommend this to everyone. Obviously, um, if you get a chance, you can get this on Amazon. Um, I'm sure there's other places, but Amazon, I, I got all your books uh, through Amazon. Expedition Ark of the Covenant. Um, and I guess you have some other books that I have and I need to read. And uh, when I do, I'd love to have you back because I just, it's incredible. Just let us know. I mean, the stories continue, but they're just not stories. It's real life of what happened with us in our discoveries and still of what happened in that time period. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any way um, people can get in touch, uh, any uh, social media, anything like that that you have out there that you want to let people know? Yeah, they can actually contact us through our website, adventuresintruth.org. And uh, there's a, a contact page on there. And it's most likely me that will make the contact back. So at any time, they can, you can get in touch with us, with us there. All right. And listen, man, if there's anything you need, I mean, we've known each other, Jim. And I got to say thank you. Um, when I first started out in this crazy Elvis world, um, you were, you know, a DJ and a, a, you ran that theater in Wilmington, um, Ohio, and uh, you really helped me out uh, booking me and whatnot whenever I just first started. So that was awesome. But for whatever reason, we stayed in touch somehow over the years. And, and then next thing I know, I'm talking to Indiana Jones. Well, we appreciate it. And there's always a purpose behind everything. And and I believe we're still not done with that purpose. So Absolutely, man. Listen, if there's anything ever I can do uh, to assist you guys in what you're doing, just let me know. Uh, I find it just incredible. So, all right. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Good to see you again. All right, brother. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Jim Rankin, we'll be seeing more of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you all so much. You bless me, folks. Thank you so much for your support as I continue down this road of the Ryan Files. I'm so looking forward to all the amazing things that lie down the road ahead. Be sure to stop by adventuresintruth.org to learn more about Dr. Jim Rankin's adventures in biblical archaeology and history. Check out the Adventure Store while you're there too. And be sure to pick up your very own copy of Expedition Ark of the Covenant. Now, of course, this episode was recorded before I left for Chile, and I am currently in Chile at this time, but I'll be getting back next week. I look forward to sharing with you all the amazing things that I am sure are taking place right now. Please stop by the RyanFiles.com, friends. If you want to support this channel, check out Becoming an Agent, or perhaps even get your hands on one of our t-shirts from the Ryan Files. Now, we're going to be taking pre-orders through April 16th, so check it out and get your swag on. Be awesome and stay curious out there, my friends, and I'll see you right here next week on The Ryan Files. No, Ryan, no Ryan Files.